up got some plantain dehydrating so that we can make this year's batch of plantain ointment. But it inspired me to come outside and do a quick video on a quick and easy survival first aid skill to have. What we're gonna be talking about today is plantain. You can head over to our Facebook page. I have a quick post over there that has some general information about plantain and some of its great uses. The way that you can use it for first aid out in the wild when you're out on the trail and you don't have access to the medicines that you need and you need a quick and easy fix till you, until you can get to where you're trying to go. It's great for minor scrapes, burns, and especially good for bug bites and itching. The most recent time that this really came in handy for me was the last time we were in Virginia, actually. I, You guys in the South, I give you some props because, man, I got attacked by those little chiggers and my feet were raw. They were itching so badly. I was pregnant at the time. I was having trouble even wearing my shoes because of them rubbing on my feet. It was just making it itch so badly. I'm one that digs my, digs my bug bites and things like that. So then I was cutting them open, digging them open in my sleep from itching and that kind of thing. So plantain is great to have. One thing I definitely have to say though is whenever you're going to use a plant while you're out on the trail or walking or in the wild at all to put on your body, make sure that where you're taking it from is not somewhere that's going to have been sprayed by pesticides or herbicides or any of that nasty stuff that you don't want to be putting on your skin and you especially don't want to be putting in an open flesh wound. Plantain is great because plantain has all different kinds of great healing properties to it. It's going to help you heal faster. It's astringent, so it's going to help suck any of the bad saliva and things like that from bugs that are going to cause it to itch. It's going to prevent your skin from scarring. It's going to numb it up a little bit and soothe it. It's an anti-inflammatory and it's also antimicrobial and antibacterial so it's going to help keep that wound really clean until you can get to where you need to be. All you have to do if you want to use plantain on some sort of a cut or bite and don't worry, at the end of this video, I'm going to bring you in nice and close and show you how to identify this plant. As you can literally just pull off one of the leaves that I've got here in front of me. Look it over, make sure it's clean. If you have a water source nearby, give it a good rinse if you can just to make sure. Definitely check the underside of the leaves because leaves like this are the kind of thing that some bugs like to lay eggs underneath them. So you want to just make sure that it's nice and clean. What you can do is you can find a rock and crush it up a little bit, or you can even take it and just crush it with your teeth a little bit. You're not tearing it apart. All you're doing is getting it so it shows a little bit of that dark green and some of the juices start flowing. I actually have a bad itch on the side of my leg right now, where you probably can't see it from there, but I've got a little bug bite there. What you can do is even if I wet this, it'll stick a little bit you got something to tie it on, tie it on. If it's in your shoes or in your feet, you can stick it right underneath. And literally all you're gonna do is put it over that wound. If you don't have a way to hold it on there, you can just sit and hold it for a little while. It'll start to take that itch right out of it. It'll start to numb it up for you, soothe it. If it's a cut or anything like that, it'll help it start to heal. It'll clean it out real nice until you can get to where you need to go. So this is something that's really quick, really easy. You can find this all over the place on the trails. It likes sun and it definitely likes places that the ground has been torn up. That plantain is actually kind of nature's way of healing up the ground where trees don't grow. Places that have been walked on a lot, cars have driven over a lot, where the land has really been torn up and it needs something to stop that erosion. The same kind of way that trees use their roots to stop erosion. This is its quick and easy way of doing that. And already, I can feel that getting numb. So it's as easy as that, guys. All right, guys. So plantain is actually quite easy to pick out and identify along the trail or along the roadside. It's a nice green plant that will stand up, like I said before, mainly in areas where it's in the sun and where the trail has been really beaten up or the land has been really beaten up. The leaves can be anywhere from about an inch long to also bigger than the palm of your hand. The smaller the leaf, the sweeter, more tender, and more concentrated it's going to be. And the larger the leaf, the more bitter and less concentrated it's going to be. As you can see, this one's actually been getting attacked by bugs quite a bit. But when you're looking at your leaf, 
you'll see that it has lateral veins on it and it's a lanceolate leaf. I'm sure that I've still got you in view there. You've got one, two, three, four, five lateral veins. You can always see on the underside of the leaf how well those veins stick out. That they're really nice ridges, especially your center vein. The leaves grow in a basal rosette. I've actually got two little plants here. They grow in a basal rosette. If this was flowering or seeding at the time, right out the center of your basal rosette would be a very tall stalk. That stalk would have a ton of seeds all down it. It can actually have about 30,000 seeds. The stalk is the same color as the rest of the plant, and the seeds are anywhere from the color of the plant to kind of a creamy yellowish color and very small, tiny seeds. If you dig your plant up, you'll see that it has a fibrous root formation. This is about as long as those roots usually get. They only go to about two inches or so, maybe three tops down into the ground, and they'll be sunk in pretty good because that's what they do is they hold that ground together. You can see that the base of the stems, especially as the plant get bigger, tend to turn this really nice maroon red color, if you want to call it that. And you won't see it as much with the smaller leaves, but with the bigger leaves especially, if I can get one to do it, oftentimes when you break it apart, if I can get it to where you can see, that wasn't a very good example. I want to get one that gets a lot of them coming out if I can. That kind of does. But you'll see that it has these very, there we go, there's one pulling off, stringy, if you can see that in my finger at all. Can't see it that well. But you'll see when you pull it off that it has very little, about the width of a fishing line, strings within the stem. But that's easy identification for these guys. You can also look up more pictures of it and that kind of thing to make sure that you know how to pick it out of the ground, and it's actually quite easy to find once you get used to it. So enjoy your day, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on the next